Jersey is. Jersey is. It's not the trash can that everybody calls it. <laughs> Jersey is. Jersey is. Jersey is my home. I'm from Plainsboro, New Jersey. Asbury Park, New Jersey. Jersey is my home. You took my answer. <laughs> New Jersey. Hazlitt, New Jersey. Carney, New Jersey. If you could uh, look into the camera and tell us your name and where you're from. This is New Jersey. For most of us, our earliest experiences with education begin at home with our parents. Before what seems like a lifetime of learning in classrooms, there are the first lessons in our living rooms. Our moms and dads are our at-home teachers. And for the kids of educators, teachers are our moms and dads. I was a teacher's kid. My world was always all about learning. And so I have this interest, understanding, and appreciation for them. Teachers, I mean. And my mom. Same thing. Adele Rogers retired in 2000 after teaching in five decades and in the same classroom and school for a quarter of a century. In 2011, she lost her educational mentor and best friend, her husband. He was a teacher and a principal and professor. It was announced shortly after that she would be honored by her town for her years of service to the children for a lifetime of lessons. I only have one regret, she said upon hearing the news, that he couldn't be here to see this, to see a teacher honored in this way. We followed Mrs. Rogers back to her old school to visit after being away from her home, away from home for a decade. And just like a teacher, she brought a child, her granddaughter, to tell her the stories and to offer one more series of lessons. This is the same, my goodness, look, erected 1962. We didn't live down here then. In fact, my son Tim hadn't been born yet. Your Uncle T, he was born in 1963. But all those um, names are all the names that I remember. Wow. My goodness, that's nice. That's nice. Hi, I'm Adele Rogers, and I taught school here at Oxycoca School starting in 1976 and I have four children and two of them were in this school at the time. Oh, can you find my name on that? I don't know if it's... See if you can Mama, find my name. Yeah, it looks yeah. Like now, since you saw her right this is Adele list. Rogers. What's the year? Um, 1991 to 1992. Yes. And in February 1977, I became a full-time second grade teacher here at Oxycoca School. This is where my good friend is. And I loved my kids, no matter what grade, whatever year it was, I always had a wonderful class. And I think children are very perceptive. They were able to know that I cared deeply for each and every one of them. And I had a favorite song. I would always start each day the same way. I would walk through the, into the classroom and the children would all 
sit down, and then I would sing, I love you, a bushel and a peck. And I would walk around the room and sort of do this to each one of the children, and they loved it. They felt loved, and I really did love them. And that was, that was the way we started our day every day. What do you want to be when you grow up? A cop. Why do you want to be a cop? Because it's, it's, it's cool. What's cool about it? I don't know. But you really... You arrest people really fast. You can, would you arrest people really fast? Yeah. Would you be fair? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. What's the most important thing you learned in kindergarten um, this year? Wait. ABCs, because then you can know how to read. And why is reading important? Because because it helps you um like when you, like when if you want if you do it read some a book it makes you you have an imagination. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I want to be um a superhero. <laughs> really, that is an answer I have never heard. Although I've thought about it, I'd like to be a superhero too. What? Um, kind of superhero would you be? What, um, what do you think your superpower could be? Um, uh, um, laser eyes. Laser eyes? All right, ready? The most important thing I learned in life is to be kind. What's the other part that I have to answer? <laughs> this is not going to work. Uh, the most important lesson I've learned from my students is probably to have that pure heart that they have. Um, Five-year-olds are awesome, and they just kind of see the world exactly how it is. And I like that. Um, you know, they just take everything at face value, and I think that's really important. If you were a superhero, what would your special power be? Super breath. What was it? Super breath. Super breath? For real? Wow, I've never heard that one either. Well, how would your super breath work? Well, I can, I can blow really hard and, and I'll put out flames. Do you guys think you'll be friends for your whole life? Mm -hmm. Hey, Michael, when we're, when we're all grown up, let's work at the same factory. I'm going to be a dentist. Me too. Okay, but I'm going to work in a different office. You're both going to be dentists? Yeah, but I'm going to work in a different office. Were you nervous when school year started? A little bit shy, yeah. A little bit shy? For like five minutes, maybe? I think the whole day. The whole day. Let's, and then it was okay? Let's make that a point. She does make you get um, small. What do you think the world would be like if we didn't go to school, we didn't learn things? Um, you'll be like a hobo. Because about learning, you can learn about all stuff and you get smart. And when you grow up, you can do all the stuff that the teacher says and you can remember. Uh, if, if there was no teacher, I, 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 I just stay home until the teacher came. What do you want to be when you grow up? A uh, teacher. Why would you like to be a teacher? Because I want to um, help the kids. Why do you think a teacher is important? Because they get days off. They fit? Oh, yeah, they fit kind of. Yeah, no, that's cute. If you go first, no, you go first. You go first. Oh, boy, here we go. Who's going to go first? Me, me. Can you tell me what the most important thing you ever learned was? Um, to go into school. Because to learn your letters. Why are learning letters important? Because you get good grades. Why is getting good grades important? Because that makes our mom happy. If you're a superhero, your superpowers for good, and if you use them for bad, it, might, it has to be an accident. But if you do it on purpose, a good guy has to come to destroy you, even though you're a good guy, but they'll have to do that. You get paid a lot of money to do this. <laughs> no. Is it hard work? Very hard work. Well, what makes it worth it to you? There's nothing else that I would want to do. That's not about the money. It's about 
ha finding that kid that's struggling or is not making friends and teaching them that you know they can do it and the way it feels when they finally do it it makes everything worth it well i can do them all by myself can you do them right now can you sing can you guys sing the abc song for me yes What do you want to be when you grow up? A teacher. Why do you want to be a teacher? Because teachers are awesome. They have a puppet. I have a puppet at home. Do you remember my puppet's name? No. You don't remember Rolf? Oh. I have Rolf. I, when I, right, right. When I fell Do you know Rolf? Sure do. I'd like to meet Rolf. Well, someday maybe I'll come down here and read to the boys and girls. Oh boy, that's great. Okay. Well, someone's coming into the library right now, so I guess we're going to have to leave. I don't know what your name is. Do you know what his name is, Willem? This puppet? No. You're a little different from what I have when I read the stories to the children. But I read with Rolf in your classroom, remember? During Dr. Seuss week? Yes. Okay. All right. You can put me down now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I've always found that there were always some children who um, would have a difficult time getting along with other children. And then I would be a little bit of a preacher and, and use that quote about, you wouldn't want someone to do that to you, and you shouldn't do that to anyone else. And I was brought up, I was raised that way, that my mom and dad had my sister and I, and we, we knew that that was the way to behave, and uh, it was a good way to teach as well. I, I lived by that um, quote my whole life, that if you want someone to be nice to you, then you have to do the same thing. You have to be a good person and show other people that you treat them the way you want to be treated. Um, I mean, Francis is second grade. It no longer is, but this was Actually, I wasn't thinking about, be about being teacher, a teacher. Um, I wanted to be an artist. My dad brought home all kinds of pencils and paper and he taught me how to um, draw cartoons, which my granddaughter is now doing, and I was pretty good at it. Being a teacher actually came later. Um, in high school, I think, uh, I decided that that was something I really wanted to do. And of course, I always wanted to teach the little children. I didn't um, have any desire to teach the older boys and girls. I really liked kindergarten, um, first and second, third grade, but that's as far as I wanted to go. What's your name? I don't know, but that little girl took me off my shelf. What's your name, little girl? Willow. Oh, that's a pretty name. What's your name, lady? Mrs. Rogers. Oh. Seems to me I remember Mrs. Rogers here years ago. Many years ago. Oh, I wish you were back. I like it when people take me off the shelf and play with me. Well, I like playing with you too. Okay, mind if I give you a little nuzzle? Oh, look at that, Willow. Okay, Willow, you put him back. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lena Pulgarin. I was born in Colombia and 
Today I live in Weehawken. And what is the most important lesson that you learned in life and how does it apply to your life today? I think the most important lesson I learned was that I deserve victory. Well, basically what that is is like um, whenever someone tries to shut you down or something, that you deserve what you have and they can't take that away from you. I've learned that anything is possible in life and it has helped me continue to dedicate my life into trying to achieve something that some people may say is impossible. I guess probably finding like a cure uh, to death or something. I don't know, maybe some sort of disease or I don't know yet. So that's, that's the goal, to, yeah, achieve something in life. <laughs> hey, you doing? Sorry. Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Oliveri. I'm principal and assistant superintendent of Weehawken High School. Weehawken High School is located in Hudson County, sitting on top of the Lincoln Tunnel. I've been a principal in this building for the past 35 years. Well, this is this was the original architecture, yeah. and uh, they because we know it's such a nice school. Instead of letting it go and then build something new, we just maintained it. Yeah. And in some cases, it's better. Yeah. Our auditorium had 800 seats. It still has 800 seats, but now it's fully air conditioned. Wow. Uh, our gym was completely modernized, but but it, it it was redone, but exactly the way it was. Yeah. They didn't change the design or anything anything like that. This school has changed. When I first became principal here, there were over a thousand students. It was a nine through twelve. Now there's only five hundred, and it's a seven through twelve. So you're dealing with a little different grade level, but the basic same philosophies of being involved, knowing what's going on in the classroom. Needless to say, you need to make curriculum changes. You have to keep updated with technology, but just be real hands-on, and and you'll be successful. How many skateboarders are there in this building? Two or three? I have four. Okay. Did JP ever finish that prop, Mrs. Steve? I don't know. No? I don't know. But, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. I know. It, it's not just sitting behind a desk. I think you need to spend most of your time outside walking into classrooms, sitting in the classrooms, talking to the students, talking to the teachers, see what's going on. Have some grade cluster meetings. Get involved in your co-curricular activities so that you have a, a perfect handle about what's going on. And if you don't know exactly what's going on, go visit some other schools. Take an extra course. In my case, I went out and got myself a, a PhD in educational supervision. Besides visiting other schools, talking to other administrators, and now at this point in my career, I'm the fellow that they come and see. Uh, they ask me for advice. Younger principals, obviously younger, they come and ask me about what, how did I get those great test scores? How did I, how do you do this? But I still ask other people, yeah. and, and some of the younger fellows are really outstanding. Well, I think the most important lesson I've learned is that along the way there's always going to be people who disapprove of what you do or judge you for what you do, but as long as you know what you're doing is right, then you shouldn't like pay attention or listen to them. Uh, I think public education is definitely important because it, it, you shouldn't have to worry about how much money you make or where you come from in order to be educated. Uh, it's something that everybody should have the right to and everybody should be privileged enough to get an education that they can be proud of. I think education is important because it gives you a reason or it gives you like, um, I don't know, confidence to know that dream, like your dreams and your aspirations, like traveling or working where you can travel, can actually come true. Like it helps you. Like it's a gateway to like accomplishing your goals, or it at least makes it easier. Because I mean, there have been like success stories without like a fair amount of education, but I mean, on in general, it like helps you accomplish your goals. Well, my original idea was to become a science teacher and a real good science teacher. So after I finished my bachelor's degree and started uh, teaching. I then decided that I would go for a master's degree in science because that's where my interest was, that and, and some mathematics. 
But after about eight or nine years, I decided that maybe I could make more of an impact by becoming uh, an administrator and therefore working with uh, the teachers as well as the students. Because every day is different. You know, the problem of yesterday is a little different today and you have to learn not to stress so much about a particular thing because tomorrow will look a little different, usually a little bit better. And you need to be more open with, with people and you need to be more open with yourself that there are certain problems that you will never be able to solve and, and just make the best of it. But it's an interesting job being a high school principal. It's an enjoyable job too. I, I like coming to work every day and I find the job to be enjoyable. And so I'm gonna stay as long as I'm feeling well. And uh, as long as my children and my wife aren't going to stress too much that I'm working and I shouldn't be. What, what are your plans for after you no longer work here? Well, my plans are going to be almost nothing. Uh, I, I, I know there are a lot of people retire and they're planning, I'm going to get this job doing this and this job doing this, and I, but I don't want a different job. This is the job I want, so I'm going to work here as long as I want to. And then my future will be some fishing, some swimming, some golfing, some relaxing, some reading, and traveling. Nothing uh, that would be considered work. But this was my room right here, number 10. And I, I have my name at home. They let me take my name. And um, that's home. How does it feel to be back today? Uh, a little melancholy. Um, the school is not the same as when I was here then. And a lot of my friends are now retired, just like myself. And we remain friends, and we go out for dinner or lunch once a month. And it's really nice that we have a connection like that yet. And I was here for 24 years in this classroom and loved every minute of it. Well, I'm loving this one now. <laughs> uh, is this your first year in here? Second year. Second year. Uh, yeah, 76. By I'll coming start. into the school, Something. there's still a lot of things the same, but um, not the same. I went to my classroom, and the walls and the chalkboard is still the same but it's not my classroom anymore. But it was fun coming in and seeing what it was like now. And this sounds like I'm bragging a little bit. I don't mean to, but it sort of tells the story that I enjoyed every minute of what I did in my classroom. And we always celebrated Grandparents' Day. Well, I had two little girls, they were sisters. Um, and I had the older one uh, and the grandparent, her grandparents came in for um, that day and I the children put on a little display and I taught a lesson and showed them exactly or a little bit of what I would do with their children or their grandchildren uh, on a daily basis and so and they uh, left as all the parents and grandparents did and then the second granddaughter came into my classroom and they were lovely children. And we had Grandparents' Day that day, that year too. And they watched and enjoyed it. And the children asked their grandparents questions about school and why, what did they like about school, et cetera. And they asked their grandparents about what they liked about school. And then when it came to an end, these two people came up to me and they said, Mrs. Rogers, and I said, yes. Uh, we're Mr. and Mrs. and um, grandparents of Nicole and Danielle and we have one regret and I said really what's your regret and he said and she or she said that we don't have any more grandchildren that will be in your second grade so <laughs> it makes me feel kind of sad that was a lovely compliment, and um, it's true, I never did see any more grandchildren from that family, but I followed the girls, and uh, I saw the parents and the grandparents occasionally when I would go shopping, and that always came to my mind how much I was appreciated, and not because I was showing off, but just because I really enjoyed what I did. and. 
the children knew it and their parents and their grandparents knew it as well. Mrs. Adele Rogers taught in second grade over at the Oxycoca School. She had a small box that she would take out and tell her students that there was something very special inside. She would tell them that in fact it was just about the most special thing in the whole world on the planet and that each one of them would have a chance to look inside the box and view this most special object. Guesses would range from diamonds to jewels to treasure and then individually each student would be called up and they could peek into the box. In the bottom of the box, there was a mirror. As each kid peered inside the box and saw their own reflection, they each made the realization that they themselves were the most special thing in the world. I think that lesson best exemplifies my mother's greatest strength as an educator, her ability to make each child feel special and unique and loved. When people come up to me and tell me how they had my mom as a teacher and how much they enjoyed being her student, there's one thing that, they, that always comes up and it's how she used to sing a bushel and a peck to her kids. Well, Mom, I love you, a bushel and a peck. Uh, this is presented to Adele Rogers in grateful appreciation of your deep roots in Manahawkin and your many years of dedicated service to the community. Presented by Mayor John Spadafora and the Stafford Township Council, June 9, 2012. I I couldn't follow my son and everything he told you is exactly right. I mean, I came to school every day and loved every minute of it. And some of my students who were married and have children tell me that they still sing a bushel and a peck <laughs> to their boys and girls, their children. So I've left kind of a legacy here in town. But uh, I thank you very much. I feel very, very special today. Thank you. Find our way. Wanna know if find our way? Wanna know if find our way? 